So hi guys, this is Swagger Turbo and now welcome back to yet another episode of Scooter Race Safari, my team career mode. But before we start the whole episode, I just want to say this is going to be a long one because there was a lot of action going on on track. So get your popcorns ready and let's get straight into the game now. So let's quickly go into the R&D. Obviously, we still have an issue with, you know, getting all the developments back because these parts are still at risk so we did get a brand new engine just last race if you haven't seen it yet i'd you know uh, recommend to go and check it out this is the third last race so we have mexico brazil and then abu dhabi if i'm not wrong so only three more races left for this season and i've got something crazy for season two hooked up for you guys but yeah on screen, as you can see, we got 600 resource points. This is going to help us a lot with just saving our progress for the next year. And that's what we have to focus on right now because the parts are at risk. And I want to try and get back as much as possible and be at least a mid-tier team, which is able to consistently just get into points. Because right now, we are a proper backmarker. The fact that we are getting points is just crazy. I think we have had around 28 till now, which is pretty decent but yeah i want to try and get more consistent with it obviously and we have another dilemma over here it's between simulator time and gym and honestly experience will come slowly to jehan so let's just give him that racecraft so that he gets slightly better in that particular area because as i was saying earlier it's pretty easy to get your experience up in this game so we're just gonna leave it to the game and just give him a little bit of racecraft because that might help him overtake a few cars here and there. But yeah, five parts at risk. Durability, only two parts. Obviously, we didn't really upgrade much in durability, so it's perfectly fine because till now, we only had one engine blowout for ourselves, and I don't think Jehan has suffered any engine blowouts. I think Liam did, but Jehan has not till now, so that's pretty decent. In the chart, though, we have almost overtaken Aston Martin, which is a huge, huge W for us because we were literally next to Williams, whereas now we are at least a bit competitive compared to Aston Martin as well. I need to try and upgrade a few of my facilities as well. We don't really have the funds for it right now, but coming sixth would give us a decent amount of money in the constructors as well, and I'm going to use that to try and... Basically, you know, upgrade our cars, upgrade our facilities, maybe get some more resource points, and we'll see how the whole thing goes out. But, right now, let's just get into the quality. It's a sped up quality, obviously. I don't want to show you the whole thing, because as I said, this is going to be a long, long episode because of the racing that we had, and we had some intense racing. And if you have seen the title already, oh boy, oh boy. We had to defend like an absolute lion, and that too against Hamilton in a Mercedes. So... Buckle up and let's just enjoy this. Going through the S section now towards you know the last and final sector, we are twelfth. I was actually surprised by you know the fact that I'm twelfth, and I was like, you know what? I don't mind a twelfth because we were pretty slow compared to the other cars. We're like the second slowest car, or should I say third slowest, with you know a equal between us and Aston Martin. So we are pretty much in the a back marker. But yeah, we came 14th over here, and if you see the gaps between 12th and pretty much till 20th, it's almost just two tenths of a second, which is super close, and let's see what happens in the race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo and Verstappen, Magnussen, Hamilton, Bottas and Charles Leclerc. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Kumar, Stroll, Lando Norris. They've taken a grid penalty and Fettel. Latifi, Mick Schumacher, Guan Yu Zhou. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Yuki Tsunoda, Albon. Deruvula, Sainz, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. The gap between the top two was just 68 thousands of a second, 
and we were just you know spread out by two tenths of a second from I think 13th all the way down to like 18th or even 19th for that matter. So this is going to get extremely interesting because we're going to be super close to each other in this whole race I feel like and yeah it's going to be a very very intense race. We are starting 11th now and we just got to try and make as many positions as possible because a lot of people had a lot of engine penalties. So we've already taken our penalty so this is actually pretty decent because we're starting 11th there's a chance there's an outside chance that we can keep the guys behind us like Norris and Hamilton behind and yeah maybe just you know luck our way into some more points but yeah let's focus on <laughs> lining this car up I went with an extremely slow strategy and kind of worked out because it was only 0.2 meters for the parking and that's pretty much you know all I could get because on average I get 0.3 but yeah it's fire red lights for the Mexican Grand Prix it's lights out and away we go we get a pretty decent start for the first time ever against AI I am going to use a bit of ERS over here almost side by side with Leclerc over here but he does overtake us and you know get the second phase slightly better using a lot of ERS because the AI also dump the ERS quite a bit and we go down the inside of Leclerc and Bottas goes wide we have a slight tap with Hamilton here's a quick replay of what just happened we had slight tap from Leclerc which indeed you know in return we hit uh, Hamilton slightly going side by side with Bottas right now and we actually make the move stick we are in ninth right now this is amazing we have had an amazing start till now went down the inside of two cars and kept our nose clean and we're going for another move out around the outside this time around of Hamilton and we do make the move stick so we are up to 8th having an amazing start did not really expect this from this particular car but as I said the margins are very very close between the cars in front of us and Hamilton tries to go for a move down the inside but somehow we just keep it around the outside we are kind of pushed wide uh, slightly you know extending the track right there but I feel like that's put perfectly fine we have kept the you know uh, position over here got very very close and Hamilton has that early AI pace that these guys normally have so we are still on mediums was happened the only person on hards I believe and we gotta try our best to just keep it within one second of Magnuson here because let's just say we lose the DRS on lap 3 from Magnuson we are pretty much done for and while I'm talking about that Hamilton tries to go for a move down the inside over here and he does make the move sick he has extreme amount of pace and then I realized that there's Bottas right behind us so I have to try and go around the outside of Hamilton here who's going defensive and we do make the move stick I am giving Hamilton as much space as possible because he's down the inside but he is smart enough to give me space and not have any contact so here's a quick replay and you can see in the replay that my front wing a slight part of the front wing is chipped even though it doesn't show up on my MFD the front wing is slightly gone which might just affect our race even without you know actually showing up on the MFD but yeah focusing up again we have to make sure that we get back in one second range of Magnuson because the gap is already 2.1 seconds if I don't catch up to Magnuson there's no way I can you know keep Hamilton behind us because that Mercedes is just way too quick in the straights and yeah even in the charts that we have they are just way too quick so as you can see as I'm saying they are way too quick going side by side into the podium onto the podium into the stadium section and we go around the outside of Hamilton and actually make the move stick so Hamilton tries to go for an inside move and breaks and just goes away from the move which is super weird uh, because I've never really seen an AI do that early, you know, before but yeah 89 level AI simulation damage so we have to be careful with every single move that we do because the slightest of taps and either our front wing is gone or we have a damaged floor or an under tray so going side by side with Hamilton yet again in lap 3 over here and we somehow just managed to stay in front of him so the one thing a pattern that I was actually noticing was Hamilton did have the pace over us but because we were running slightly lower wings than him we were able to keep it in just about you know in front of him in sector 2 and 3 and in the first sector even let's say with the ERS dump 
I was able to just about stick with him. He was just slightly overtaking us and then, yeah, breaking. And we had better breaking than him and I was able to overtake. So I'm going to try and use that to our advantage. And this time around though, he is extremely close. Way closer than last time around. But he has a slight tank slapper coming out of that turn into the last DRS section here. And that just gives us that slight breathing space that we need. And he's making another mistake. So maybe he has front wing damage. Who knows? But we are gaining a little bit of time here and there compared to Hamilton right now. So again, on this back straight, I had told this earlier as well. Hamilton is extremely quick. But we do have ERS this time. But Hamilton will get the purchase of DRS because he's within one second of us and Magnus is just four seconds in front. But we are doing our best to defend as much as possible from Hamilton right here. And we do make a move around the outside. He tries to go down the inside. We cover it off and give him just the right amount of space. Thankfully, no damage for him or me. And we still, for yet another lap, we survive just in, you know, in the points. But yeah, we have to keep focusing on this race because he's right behind us right now and there's not a single chance or, you know, a single turn where I can lose a little bit of my focus. But coming out of the last turn in the la end of lap 4, Bottas and Hamilton start going side by side. I see that and instantly go to the right so that I can give a slight bit of toe to Bottas over here and maybe, just maybe, he can use that uh, toe from us and overtake Hamilton and that he does. Bottas as well as Norris, both of them overtake Hamilton and Norris actually overtakes Bottas as well. So Bottas is, you know, he did get one move done, but then Norris overtakes him, so he's net 10th. Norris gains two positions and Hamilton, I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he's lost a bit of front wing fighting with Bottas or something, but he has dropped down and you can see it on the minimap. So this does give us a slight bit of breathing room so we can focus a bit more. But the only problem is that even the McLaren is super, super quick compared to, uh, you know, our car. And yeah, the fact that we were able to keep a Mercedes behind us, I was like, you know what? Let's try and keep the McLaren behind us as well. But Norris gives us a proper RG RG. He almost sends us into the wall. And while I'm talking about that, we get a safety car. So Lance Stroll... I think gets a uh, engine blowout and he is out of the session bringing the safety car out. So as you can see on the screen right now, we have MFD where Mark wants us to pit for hards and they make yet another pit for the medium set of compounds. So I was actually debating about this as well, but then I was like, you know what, we only have around 28 to 30 percent of tire wear let's just stay out try and save a bit of our tires because our tire wear was actually pretty bad we need to focus a little bit on our tire wear as well that's obviously under chassis so next season we have to focus a little bit on our tire wear because we i was driving normally the way i uh, do in multiplayer but yeah we are still losing quite a bit of tire wear, so we need to try and lift in course under the safety car, try and extend the tires stint over here if we can to like maybe 16, because 16 is what we need to go get to, but we are already at around 32-33%, so it's going to be a stretch, but we're going to give it our best shot. And safety car is coming in this lap, so we are underway already while I'm talking about that. Nor is getting an amazing launch out of the last corner. We have been caught napping right here, and Magazine already has around six tenths on us. We are going side by side with Norris. I'm going to do the same kind of move that I did with Hamilton earlier and just keep Norris behind for as long as possible because after a few uh, laps here and there, even the AI you know gets slower. The AI behind us catch us up and then they start fighting each other because of DRS and whatnot. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Bottas and Norris are going at it into this left hander right here. And they are still side by side. So an amazing restart again from Valtteri right here. And he does make the move stick which is very good for us because to the time they are fighting, we can just focus on trying to catch up to Magnussen who has just been on a different... Uh, you know, level at this point because Magnussen and everyone, the rest of the field in front. So both the Ferraris, both the Red Bulls, Magnussen in front and of course our race leader George Russell. 
So Mercedes does have the pace to, you know, just be in the lead of this race. But Hamilton has just been caught up behind us. And thankfully, we were able to keep him uh, behind for, I think, four or five laps. And the best part is, it's not even the end. We literally have around 26 more laps to go. And there's going to be a lot of us versus Hamilton action coming soon. But yeah, right now, lap 15, we are getting into the pits. We are going to try a uh, undercut if we can on the guys around us because our tires were in a pretty bad condition, let's just say that much. And I was trying to just get back into the pits, maybe set a good lap on the hards and try to, let's say, not overtake Magnussen, obviously, but even close the gap. Just stay away from Norris and Bottas at the back is my whole plan right now. Coming out of the pits though, we see signs, Carlos signs on soft tires. I have no idea what he's doing on those. But yeah, he's going to have a proper a lap over here. So I might just, you know, go to the side, give him the space and maybe just follow him through and get DRS if he can. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it goes because he's going to have amazing grip and you can literally see that. As I'm saying, he just flies past us on those softs and we still are on pretty cold hearts. So trying to just follow, follow him over here is going to be pretty hard. But we're going to give it our best shot, obviously, to just stay within a one second, which is looking kind of hard right now because he's already pulled a one second gap over us. So the hearts, I don't think, is the right option or the right tire to go to. But obviously, we have to make two pit stops. So yeah, we did go into the hearts and cloudy weather, I don't really think suited the hearts that much. So now getting to lap 18 and as you can see, Hamilton is right behind us. Norris pit and somehow made the overcut work. So he's right in front of us and Hamilton is just four tenths behind. So somehow after the whole pit stop phase, he has caught us up. And I knew for a fact the first lap, Norris is going to be struggling quite a bit with cold tyres. So I'm going to try and push a little bit, maybe go down the inside of this turn right here. But no, Norris has pretty decent space on the straights and breaks quite a lot on those cold tyres. Try to go for a switchback kind of thing, but we go wide over here. So I let go and make sure you know that he's in front because otherwise it would have been an illegal overtake. So while I'm doing that, Hamilton tries to go down the inside of a section where we cannot go side by side. So a very, very weird and bad exit out of there into the S section actually. And coming down the main uh, back straight now, I would say, we have pretty decent uh, gap to Norris. Of course, Magnuson is like 3.5 seconds ahead of us. There's no way we are catching up to him. But we can still get Norris because we have DRS. Even though Hamilton is like in the DRS uh, with us, I think with DRS, we'll, we'll be able to keep it in front of him because we are running slightly lesser wings than the AI. But while I'm talking about that, Hamilton just cruises right next to us. Obviously, in the Mercedes as well, he has the proper bar unit of his. And yeah, our upgrades are not really focused on... I was going to say it was not really focused on our bar train, but Hamilton tries to go down the inside. I was trying to turn in. Maybe it was my fault because we turned in a bit too early. But the biggest issue is we have under... I think we have floor damage or diffuser damage. One of the two, I'm not really sure. But we have a slight bit of damage because of simulation uh, damage. So this is going to be extremely hard to maybe, you know, keep Hamilton behind us now. And let's have a proper onboard from Hamilton's side. And you can see how much damage we've actually had. We suffer a front wing damage and even side pod damage. And going side by side with Hamilton, we have a slight bit of contact. And it just sends us pretty you know weary here and there but somehow we make the move stick i have no idea how this has worked but hamilton again goes around the outside and we are going to send one down the inside try to just keep our position on him and we get more side pod or maybe even side tray or side floor damage which is super bad because once it starts deteriorating It'll just keep on, you know, it's basically like a chip damage. It'll keep going and we'll lose more and more, uh, you know, aero. But again, we are still in front of Hamilton, which is, you know, our main goal right now. 
And as I said, we are going to have a lot of battles with Hamilton. So from not what, now what I'll do is, I'll just show you guys every lap what happens in the main straight. So right now, Ocon has also joined us and Hamilton in the battle. We're going side by side. Ocon goes down the inside of Hamilton. We break a little bit early and our tyres are actually our front wings touch, which is super weird because it was just like we've glued together. I tried to break a bit more, but it didn't really work out. And at the end of the day, Ocon just gained two positions and we just lost one each. This is somewhat similar to what happened with Hamilton earlier as well with Norris and Bottas. But yeah, we have... DRS this time around, lap 22, on the main straight, I only have 11% ERS left because I've been using it so much battling Hamilton and Hamilton tried to go around the outside but we still have that slight bit of advantage over him and we can just hang on for dear life for one more lap. So I was like, this is inevitable. So <laughs> after one point, there is no way we, you know, we stay in front of Hamilton. But till the time we can stay in front of him, I'm going to enjoy this as much as possible. But as we can see in front, Norris ha is just 2.4 seconds in front of us. So there's something going on in front. They are having a proper battle and we are closing up to them. And while I'm talking about that, Hamilton, with the help of DRS, goes down the inside. We have to go around the outside over here. But Hamilton, yet again, very, very vulnerable in that turn of one. The right-left chicken, he's just not able to take it. Maybe he should just take the line that he took earlier on in real life. I just cut across the whole chicken. But yeah, focusing back on our race right here, we're still just about in front of Hamilton here. And you can see that my controller is glitching out. I have to just keep on closing the MFD over here. And he does go for a move around the outside. He fancies a move around the outside, but thankfully doesn't go through with it. If he did go for that move, I think there would have 100% been, uh, you know, a bit of contact over there. And who knows, maybe both of us were in the wall or both of us would have had an amazing S section side by side. But thankfully, we don't need to go through that stress of going side by side through the S sections in Mexico. But yeah, going through the stadium section and the last corner now. We are still two seconds behind Ocon, but Ocon has caught up to Lando in front and we still only have less than 20% of ERS. I have been dumping it on down the straight because I know that our front wing is you know lower than uh, Hamilton and he goes for a move again down the inside though. Can he make this move stick this time around? But no, we go around the outside pretty, you know, I would say it's a somewhat similar move that we did the last time round and somehow we just stay in front of him but he's coming back at us i'm forcing him to go around the outside so that we get the inside over here defensively and we go wide over here he's trying to go for a switch back and our control making a lot of issues here you could have seen that the mft just kept opening up even now it's opening up so i have no idea why the hell the control is doing this but whenever i'm going like extremely left or right it just keeps opening uh the mfd up for some reason so Thankfully, we survived that. Lap 25 now, yet again. Hamilton behind. We are in front. We have to make sure that we stay in front because I'm pretty sure that Carlos has to pit and when he does pit, he ha he'll come behind us. So, going down the inside yet again and Hamilton does almost look like, you know, he's going to make the move stick. But yet again, we are go able to go around the outside and Hamilton throwing everything that he has at us. Again, forcing him to go around the outside, keeping the inside line here. And we are just able to keep uh, P11 here. We are not even fighting for points here. But what an amazing battle this is turning out to be. This battle is not for points, but it is purely for, you know, just showing that who the better driver is right now. But this time round, Hamilton getting an amazing exit out of the last turn going on to this long, long straight. And Bottas tries to, you know, join in on the fun. Hamilton going down the, the, you know, on the left, Bottas on the right. We are right behind them going side by side and there's a gap which opens up and we just send it down the inside. A bit of contact with Bottas right here, but somehow we just went through both of them. A bit of tyre banking 
and we make the move stick. Hamilton, I think, locked up there. He can still see the damage front wing that we have. And yeah, a slight bit of tire banging with Bottas and we still stay in front of Hamilton, which is our biggest motor right now. Lap 28 though, yet again, Hamilton is back. Two tens, closing up quite a bit. Carlos Sainz is out of the session though. So, he actually had pit already and was behind us. So, because, you know, obviously Ocon had overtaken us. But while I'm talking about this, Hamilton again tries to go around the outside and I think the outcome is going to be similar. We keep it down the inside, just park the car on the apex and through to, uh, basically sector 2 and sector 3, there's not many places where he can actually overtake. So we just keep him at bay. Lap 28, just end of lap 28 actually. And Hamilton is way closer than last time around. And he will have DRS of course. So we have to try and use up all our ERS here. Just to keep, you know, maybe even give him a battle. And give him a fight going into the turn 1. He has overtaken us and cleared. But he actually tries and keeps the inside line. We go slightly off track over there. We just pushed wide. He just breaks in the middle of a turn. Which is super super weird to me. I was caught off guard completely. He tries to go down the inside, but we completely cover it off. Make him go around the outside and yet again. He's literally using whatever he can. ERS, DRS, and every single thing in his book has been used. Lap 29 now. He's way closer. We are side by side and we have not even touched the DRS line yet. So is this the chance that Hamilton has to overtake a back marker such as us? And just go into the distance and maybe, you know, just fly away like Ocon. But again, he just slows down way too much after taking turn one. No idea why and what happens to Hamilton right here. But he just slows down mid-corner. Gives us just, you know, that slight bit of chance to go around the outside, carry a bit more speed and essentially overtake him into this next DRS uh, zone and just keep it down the inside and make sure that the corner is ours. So we've literally had this from lap 3 all the way to lap 30 now. And this time around though, Bottas and Hamilton going side by side through the last turn. So this is going to give us slight bit of breathing space and give us massive deja vu as well. Hamilton and Bottas going side by side. I see that and again go a little bit to the right so that Bottas gets that little bit of maybe slipstream advantage from you know behind us and he does he overtakes hamilton so this is going to be huge because i know for a fact that alfa romeo is not too quick compared to us we have pretty similar pace and hamilton does overtake hamilton uh, sorry bottas does overtake hamilton here and this is our chance to streak ahead at least by a little bit not give him DRS and they are still going side by side. Bottas and Hamilton, ex-teammates by the way, are still having a proper battle. Lap 35 now, end of lap 35, going to lap 36, the final lap. This time around though, Hamilton is 1.3 seconds behind us. We only have 6% of ERS because we've just been dumping it to try and maintain the gap. He did eventually overtake uh, Valtteri over here. And you can see, as soon as he overtook him, and because we were already around 2 seconds in front, Hamilton also, you know, just made a gap to Bottas and Bottas without the help of DRS just could not stick with us. So, 4 second gap to B Valtteri over here and just about, you know, uh, more than one second and the tyres are pretty much done. You can see that we're going wide. Thankfully, not getting any warnings there because we went a bit too wide. But, yeah, we did slow down there. So, thankfully, no penalties right there. And one under one second. Is this the chance that Hamilton needs? The last lap, the final sector. Will he be able to get into DRS, use the DRS and overtake? And the answer is no. We've had over 10 laps minimum of, you know, just side by side battling with Hamilton. Hamilton not knowing how to take the first corner, breaking mid corner. And we're just going around the outside with a little bit of extra pace. And there we go. We end up 11th. All this action, all this racing, and for what? We didn't even get a single point. But 
I'm pretty happy that we at least finished the whole race over here and finished it in front of a Mercedes. So as I said, we were really not fighting for points or position. We were basically fighting for bragging rights and that part just comes to us. And Russell also winning his first ever Formula 1 uh, race, I'm pretty sure, in-game obviously. And it is in Mexico. And I think he did, you know, just about edge Perez as well as Verstappen. So, yeah, congrats to George Russell. We were able to keep this guy's teammate, George Russell's teammate, just behind us. How crazy is that? Wow. But yeah, on the podium, it's a Red Bull 2-3, which is decent amount of points for the Red Bull. And that will help them just overtake or actually extend the lead over Ferrari because Ferrari had a DNF. That's the last thing that Ferrari needs right now because they were in a proper fight for WCC as well as WDC with Leclerc. And yeah, this I feel like is just basically saying that they are completely out of the WCC because Carlos has just been okay, not too good, not too bad. But with this DNF, it's going to be extremely hard to catch up the points in the last two races. But yeah, George Russell first, Perez second, Verstappen, and Ricardo is fourth. In that McLaren, he's the rival, he's 100% going to win it. Then we got Alonso, Gasly, Magnussen, Norris, and Ocon running up the top 10. Of course, we came down in, you know, like finished in 11th, we started in 11th, we'll take it. And it's only now 10 points between... Verstappen and Leclerc and only 16 points between Verstappen and Perez. So even in going into the last two races now in Brazil and Abu Dhabi, it's extremely close between the top three. We are pretty much, you know, solidified in 11th. I don't think Magnussen is going to get that many points to maybe overtake us. Hopefully he doesn't. But if he does, fair enough. But yeah, let's quickly take a look at the constructors. 44 between... Uh, Red Bull and Ferrari now, which is sad. But the main thing, Alpha Tori with 23 points. They are closing up on us and our sixth spot is looking in danger. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this amazing defense battle between us and Hamilton, make sure to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.